Okay, I can start because I'm not that important. A few years ago, um, one of my kids, as usual, packed its uh, school bag in the evening and it was like tons. <laughs> Actually, I think it's, well, it, yeah, you can get like five or six kilos on a children's bag. Um, and it's just books and I said poor boy you know one day there will come a time when you won't have to carry all this stuff around because everything you need to know will be in the internet and all you have to carry is um, a laptop or um, a tablet or whatever and he went I mean he's crazy about the internet but he went are you crazy no way I said, why? And he said, because then I don't know what's right or wrong. Someone's not got to decide. And in the internet, there's everything. So who decides? And I said, well, who decides what right, what's right in your textbooks that, you, that you're given by your teachers might be wrong as well. And we, had, we ended in a long discussion, which showed that um, open educational research isn't such a simple subject. Um, and it's not so easy to decide whether it's good or bad. But Uh, one year ago, our neighbor Poland said, okay, Tanya, we'll give it a try. And they uh, started something which is by now the world's largest project concerning the shift to open educational research. And um, I welcome Mike Wojniak, uh, Wojniak, who is the president of the FOSS Foundation, and he was going to tell us what happened this year. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> uh, hello. My name is Mike Wozniak, or Michał Wozniak, or as it was printed on my badge, uh, question mark, question mark. Uh, uh, there is UTF-8 now, uh, and we can use it, so it works like that. Uh, I'm the president of the board of the Free and Open Source Software Foundation. It's a Polish NGO that works and promotes uh, free software uh, and free and open um, uh, standards, technological standards uh, generally, to the government, to the business, to education, everywhere. And the foundation is a part of the Open Education Coalition. Uh, the Open Education Coalition is, an, is a coalition of several different NGOs and institutions, including our foundation, Wikimedia Poland, uh, OpenStreetMap Poland, and some higher education establishments also. Uh, and we're working, uh, we're working towards, well, as the name says, uh, free and open education. Free as in freedom, not free as in beer. So, uh, oops, sorry, who knows? Who of you knows that you, they, that you use free software on a daily basis? Hands up, show of hands. Okay, that's not that bad. Uh, probably more people recognize those icons, right? Thank you, thank you. Uh, probably more people recognize those icons. Um, or those or those logos. This is this is all free software. What what does free software mean? It, it's all important uh, in the context of open education resources. Uh, well, it means this. It means four freedoms. It's, it means the freedom to use, uh, to modify, to share, and to share modifications. If you think how w Wikipedia works, this is how it works, right? Everybody can view it or use it any way they want. Anybody can uh, modify. Uh, an article, enhance the article, use it within the Wikipedia or outside the Wikipedia. They can share uh, what's in Wikipedia and they can share the modifications they've made. If you, want to, uh, if you want to ascertain yourself that people actually can share modifications and can share the, the content from Wikipedia in any ways they like, you can try to find two beautiful uh, projects. One of them is called Nonsensopedia and the other one is called Deletopedia. Uh, That's a homework, since we're talking about education resources. Uh, do not treat anything in those portals as truth. Please do not. The, you should not do that. But what is openness? What is openness in the context of Open edu uh, Education Coalition? Well, three main, three main points. Technological openness. So open standards, free software, not shutting anybody out of uh, being able to use the content because of technology. For example, not using closed formats, right, that require closed source, or using closed platforms that require certain kind of devices uh, to, to be able to use them. Open licensing, so Creative Commons by Creative Commons by SA, GPL, BSD, or other open licenses. Uh, by the way, uh, non-commercial and no derivatives licenses are not free. They infringe upon one, one or two of those freedoms I showed you earlier and accessibility, so that people with disabilities, for example, people that mm, uh, do not see or do not hear, can still uh, somehow engage with the, 
with the content. Those three, those three areas are uh, crucial to what, what the Open Education Coalition does. Uh, and why are we doing that? Uh, a few years ago, Eben Moglen was, was on the bigger stage. He's a little bit bigger than me, so he needs a bigger stage, I guess. Uh, he, was talking about, he was talking about how democracy and how uh, open, open flow of ideas needs free software and needs um, open platforms. And he said um, there and in many other places that we live in times where no single, there is no reason for a single brain to re remain hungry. Brains thrive and live and, and uh, um, expand themselves and develop themselves on information, on knowledge, on data, on art. And today with you know, these devices and these devices and the internet, we can send all those things, art, knowledge, information, data, etc., uh, etc., et all around the world completely free or almost completely free. Everybody who has an internet account uh, who has a connection to the internet can participate and can use them uh, as, uh, as broadly and as uh, beautifully as they want. So there is no reason for a single brain to remain hungry and we believe that this is a kind of a mission statement for, uh, for us. Uh, let's get to the background of the situation in Poland. A set of textbooks in Poland costs around 150 euros. That might not be much here, but if you take into account that an average wage is 1,000 euros and minimal wage in Poland is about 280 euros, that's quite a lot. That's quite a lot, and that's per, per child per year. So if you have a family of th with three children, they have, to pay, uh, they have to pay 450 euros per year for a set of textbooks and nothing else. Uh, you can compare that to France, right, where the minimal, minimal wage is higher than the average wage in Poland. Um, so there used to be a second-hand market for textbooks, right? I could use my older friend or my older sibling uh, textbook in, because really what changes in math or biology year to year, right? Some changes are important, of course, right? Sometimes there has to be a new edition, but most of the time you can use the same, the same textbook well. Uh, textbooks are being created in a way that they are flimsy. They fall apart after a year or two. They are integrated with exercises. So a child, when they do exercises in school, they write on the textbook. So the textbook is unusable for the next child next year. And they are being changed year by year, often in non-subject matter ways. For example, shifting, shifting the, um, the uh, order in which information is given and calling that version 2.0, right? So next year, next child cannot use the same textbook and it's, uh, it's a strategy to, to kill off a second-hand market. And the other thing is that while the textbooks for a given class are being chosen by teachers, parents pay for them. Right, so teachers choose, parents pay, so publishers organize uh, workshops for teachers and promise schools gifts. You see how, how well that works, right? You can influence a teacher and the parents will have to pay anyway. Uh, government offers subventions for, uh, for uh, poor families to buy textbooks and this is um, in the range of 32 million euros per year. That's a lot of money. And the whole value of the market, of the textbook market in Poland, is around 250 euros per year, which went up from 155 million euros in 2005, even though the number of students fell by 1 million. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, so, so there was a campaign and, there were, and we were talking with the government and we were talking with many, many, many so-called stakeholders that we need textbooks and we need open textbooks, and we need textbooks that are accessible to people with disabilities that are liberal licensed, open licensed, and that are technologically open so I can use any device or I can print the textbook for my use uh, from any device. And it turned out, turned out last year that there was uh, a pilot program announced by the Polish government um, up to a tune of 11 million euros uh, to create just that, open textbooks for Polish schools. Uh, publishers were invited, but they did declined to take part in that uh, program, even though they were invited as partners that would be paid for working in that program. 
government uh, government said well you have the you have the um, uh, experience you have the information you have you know how to make textbooks we need you help us help us make great quality textbooks for polish schools we will pay you but uh, but the but the textbooks will be uh, liber license and that was something that publishers could not uh, swallow so there was a media campaign so there was a media campaign and a lobbying campaign uh, run by the by the publishers uh, publishers lobby and these were the these were the general um, arguments being used I will go through them uh, some of them are uh, interesting some of them are hilarious so let's take it from the top the cost uh, of course, the, the, the first argument was, oh my God, we will pay uh, some exorbitant amount of money from, uh, from uh, our pockets, you know, from, from the taxpayers' money to create textbooks that are uh, otherwise created by the, by the publishers and seemingly for free. I don't know what was the argument here. Uh, with, but we, if we take into account the subventions, the 32 million euros per year, and if we take into account the one-time cost of creating uh, uh, electronic textbooks of 11 million euros once it doesn't seem that the argument of cost holds right uh, equipment that's a uh, that's a very strong argument and that's a lesson that we've learned along the way that calling the calling the uh, program e textbooks which was not our choice um, calling the, the program e-textbooks, electronic textbooks, meant that the, that the publishers could do um, two things. They could attack the program on grounds that, oh my God, everybody will have to buy an iPad or an, a tablet or a computer. Every child in Poland will have to buy a new tablet each year, seemingly, um, because there is no second market for devices, apparently. Uh, of course, this argument uh, doesn't hold because we think uh, we were very strongly um, we very strongly argued that if such a program is going to be created and funded by government those textbooks have to be prepared to be printed so that the uh, so that a child can go to a library or a school library or a printing shop or whatever and print the whole textbook or just the chapters they need so that they then don't carry the kilograms on their backs uh, to, to print the, the textbooks or the chapters they need for a given lesson or for a given uh, time, right? Uh, and the second thing that the um, publishers did very fast was to publish their own e-textbooks. Of course, closed. Of course, not licensed on, you know, under open, open terms. Of course, DRM'd, so closed or so technologically available only for a given platform or for a given operating system and available only for a given child if that child buys it, right? So, uh, subverting the whole idea and using the same name. That's why it's very, it was very important, um, it was, it's, it's very important to look at the names of such projects, right? E-textbooks is not a good name. Quality. Uh, of course, the, 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 this argument is the, is the traditional think of the children kind of argument, right? Think of the children. If, if the government will try to do textbooks, if the government will try to create textbooks, the textbooks will definitely be of bad quality. You know, uh, the, the, the information there will be of bad quality. And nobody will, uh, you know, only we, the textbook publishers, with our experience can really create good textbooks. Uh, well, because they declined to take part in the project, uh, apparently the quality was not really what mattered to them. So that one was quite easy to counter. Uh, unfair business practice, this one is nice. Uh, the argument goes, if the government pays somebody to create textbooks and then the textbooks are, uh, will be, uh, will be um, published on open licenses and everybody can copy and everybody can share and everybody can improve upon that, uh, that me, that's an unfair business practice against us, right? It, 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 will, it, will, it will attack our, our business and uh, it will, it's, it's basically a dumping uh, situation, right? Uh, a simple, uh, simple, simple retort would be that a government program cannot really be an unfair business practice because government is not business. Um, so that one didn't hold for long. Um, the other one, market destruction and job loss, is of course connected to this, uh, to the unfair business practice uh, argument. Um, and the argument goes, uh, 
if there are free and open uh, textbooks available for all students, um, then we will lose our business and, we, and people will lose jobs, right? People um, employed in, in, in the publishing business, people employed in bookshops, people employed in the whole, um, in the whole er area related to textbooks and publishing and etc, etc, etc. I'm not sure if you've heard um, something called the broken window policy. Who of you have heard about broken window policy? Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. But broken window policy goes something like this. Uh, John broke a window, but that's good that John broke the window because the window maker will make money. We should break more windows. In that way, we can support the, the industry of window makers. This is the same argument, right? Uh, we, can do, we can make better textbooks. We can make textbooks available for everybody and we can make them cheaper, but we should make them uh, we should let it, you know, let the market decide and we should let the publishers do their job as they did so far because this will support an old business, an old, an old uh, industry. The assumption here is, of course, that if the money won't go to, um, to the publishers, it will not go anywhere, it will disappear from the economy, which is, of course, not true, as people that will have those 150 euros in their pockets will probably buy something else or invest in their whatever they want to invest. Uh, IT industry will reap profits. This one is, is, is one of my favorites uh, because it works nicely with the previous one. Or, yeah, it, will, it, it works beautifully with the previous one. So the previous one was, uh, this is unfair business practice, uh, you, are, you are taking away money from our, our, our industry. And uh, then uh, the, the, the IT industry will reap profits argument is the other way around. We want to take money from another industry. So I'm not really sure what was the, um, what was the thinking again, uh, behind that, uh, that argument. Obviously, you can't, ha you can't have it both ways, right? Either, either giving money to an uh, industry is okay or not. Uh, apart from that, and now speaking seriously, uh, this is simply not true. There is no way... Um, that the IT industry will reap, reap huge profits because, first of all, uh, teachers or, or, or parents or, uh, or school children will be able to just print the uh, textbooks, as I said before, right? So that there will be no huge spike in buying tablets, laptops, or whatever, right? Um, and, uh, and secondly, every single school in Poland, more or less every single school in Poland, already, have, uh, already has some infrastructure, uh, access to the internet, and, and some computers. There, there's not nearly enough computers in Polish schools, but there are some. And, it, and more or less every single Polish school has uh, at least a few. So, uh, IT industry will not reap any profits because there are no profits to be, to be reaped. Uh, centralized education system. This is. Uh, this is something that I think uh, wouldn't play in Germany, but played quite, uh, quite well in, in Poland uh, with our history and our you know, remembrance of things past. Um, the, the, the argument here is that if the government uh, creates the textbooks and then makes it mandatory for schools to use these particular textbooks, this is a, way, this is a form of censorship. This is a way of government deciding what, sc what school children should be taught at schools, and this is bad. There are two problems with that, uh, with that argument. First of all, um, the original program didn't, uh, didn't assume that this will be the only available textbook. It, it only, it only sh um, the, 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 the pilot program um, uh, only said that the, these textbooks will be prepared and teachers can use them or can use anything else. Um, and, and the other problem with that is the government already decides what children are taught at schools, right? We have uh, institutions that decide what is the program in Polish schools and only, only this can go into textbooks that are, that are qualified to be used at schools. So uh, this ar argument is moot. Is moot. And the last one is my absolutely favorite. Uh, death of books, the culture and everything. Uh, the, argument, the argument goes like this. Uh, Textbooks uh, are the main revenue stream for publishers and for bookstores right now, which is kind of true. People don't buy books, physical books, uh, that much anymore. And textbooks were, you know, year to year to year, um, solid, uh, 
solid market for the for the, the, the for, for the publishers. So textbooks uh, textbooks are something that holds the industry up, and if we remove that, if we publish open licensed textbooks and everybody can uh, will be able to use them, uh, that means that the industry will crumble. And because our civilization, our culture, is based on books, right? We can now see that our civilization will crumble. Uh, and I'm not making this up. This actually, this argument, uh, with a little more words in it and a little, you know, padded here and there, showed up in one of the uh, one of the uh, most important Polish newspapers. And I was not sure I was reading that correctly. Uh, I don't think I will comment on that uh, on that argument. Uh, this is uh, this is one of the ways that publishers were fighting against the uh, unfair business practice that they uh, that they said this program is. Uh, this is a uh, this is a legal letter sent to all the universities that uh, said that they want to take part in the program because the program uh, the, the government asked publishers, universities, higher education establishments, etc., 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 to help write those. Uh, to help write those uh, textbooks, right? Uh, and the publisher said, we will not take part in that. And then they sent this legal letter to universities that were interested in taking part in the program. The legal letter saying something like this. This program, as you, as you know, uh, is an unfair business practice. And hence, if you take part in that uh, program, you will be doing something illegal and we will um, go to court with you. Uh, it was very nice of one of the universities to, uh, to publish this letter. And, uh, of course, we had a lawyer to look through that letter. I will not, uh, I will not describe what the lawyer said, because it would not be very nice. Uh, but basically, uh, this letter was a threat, uh, and a threat that was uh, in no way based in, uh, in law. But these were the methods that the publishers were using to threaten the institutions that were trying to take part in the program. Okay, so what do we have? What do we have today? Today, the program uh, has been expanded. Today, the whole curriculum uh, of the general education in Poland will have uh, open textbooks. There, there are 18 open textbooks in the works being prepared right now as we speak, um, and all of them are technologically open. All of them are uh, open licensed, and all of them are accessible to people with disabilities because this is what we um, this is what we were. Uh, looking into very closely. Uh, there is a broad cooperation around the program. There is academia, there are NGOs, there are companies involved in creation of those, of those, um, of those textbooks. Uh, and the cooperation goes from our perspective, from the perspective of the coalition of uh, the Open Education Coalition, um, is um, uh, mainly about two things. First of all, workshops, uh, seminars and general schooling about uh, openness, access accessibility and li licensing. These are not easy topics. These are not easy topics and you can assume that everybody or anybody that takes part in a program like this will not get a, some part of it, will not understand uh, open licensing or will not understand accessibility or will not uh, understand technological um, uh, openness. And it, was, it is crucial that, uh, that we are able to cooperate with the government and with the, with other institutions that are involved in this progr uh, pr program, on, uh, in this program, to help them understand and to help them make uh, make decisions that are compatible with those three uh, those three values. And uh, the the other thing that came up lately is helping to find materials. Uh, there are there is a lot of places in the internet, in the world, uh, that offer. Uh, open licensed materials like photos, like films, like animations, like graphs, like anything like that, right? Uh, but if you want to use something like that in a textbook, it has to be high quality. We know that, right? Uh, so it's hard to expect from the from the people working in those uh, in those programs that had no or little experience with open um, open education resources before to know where to look for them and to know how to look for them. Uh, and this came out to be a problem at some point that we need that the, the, the program needs uh, very good high quality um, materials but it's hard to find them so the Polish Wikipedia chipped in and and uh, together with the operator of the program they 
they are running right now a, a, um, a contest called Wikilikes e-textbooks uh, with people with the operator saying we need a picture of this, 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 this. There are hundreds of pictures that are needed and Wikipedia users are searching for them in Wikipedia resources or in all other open uh, resources on the internet because they know how to. They know how to search for them, they know what to look for and they know how to um, you know, look at the license and know what's happening and if it can be used in, in such a project. Uh, more and more institutions use and promote uh, liberal licenses. There are even uh, ministries uh, that have grants that require liberal licensing of project outcomes. And from the, uh, from the, from the perspective of, of uh, Open Education Coalition, this is a huge win. This is a huge thing, because once we pay for something from our tax money, we should be able to use it in any way we want. We have already paid for that. Uh, but the jury is still out, and we'll see in a year. The textbooks are being prepared, the first batch, the, first, the, the one that was being prepared in the pilot program, has already been published and is available and got positive response. Uh, but the 18 textbooks that are being prepared We'll see them in a few, uh, a few months and then they will be used uh, in schools and then we'll know if teachers use them, if children are happy with them, if everything went uh, as expected as it sh as in, uh, as, and as it should. So last thing, lessons learned. Oh my god, I have two minutes. Uh, lessons learned. Uh, don't be shy, go for full-blown openness, right? Go for technological openness, library licensing. As I said, non-commercial and no der derivatives are not open licenses. They will cause problems and they will cause uh, tears. Accessibility, uh, WCAG 2.0 is highly recommended. That means that people that with the disabilities will be able to use the, uh, use the materials created. This way, even if somebody will try to find uh, something against this project, they will not find it within those three which are the important ones, right? Uh, don't call them e-textbooks, as I said, or electronic textbooks. Use open textbooks, liberal textbooks, free textbooks, anything that, has, that is based on the four freedoms, the important part. Because you can, you can really relate to people on the important part. The electronic part is nice, right? That you can use it via internet, etc. But it's not the crucial part. The crucial part is the, is the licensing. So, so let's use that. Uh, explaining freedom to general public is hard, but this is the biggest selling point and we can be clear about it and people, people will eventually get it, right? It's hard to translate it to simple terms, it's hard to uh, explain people. You will be able to use that in any way you want. Will I be able to share it? Yes. Uh, modify it? Yes. Uh, remix? Yes. Just assume that the answer is yes. And at some point, some, uh, at some point people will get it and will fall, fall in love with the, with the project. Work together and form broad coalitions, right? This is, this is something that worked beautifully in Poland. We have, a, we have a broad coalition of different NGOs. Some of them are working mainly with accessibility. Some of them, like mine, are working mainly with technological openness. Some of them uh, are working with, with uh, licensing openness. Uh, when you have a broad coalition, you can do beautiful things like Wikilikes, e-textbooks. You have a lot more input, input and you have a lot more experience and, and expertise. Support openness, but look carefully and react because politicians will change their minds or will not understand something or will go with something that they, uh, they thought they understood but they didn't. Uh, and be clear about what is okay and what is not okay. This really helps. Don't, uh, also, uh, yeah. Uh, right, sorry. One more thing. Uh, do not assume malice where lack of knowledge is an explanation that is good enough. Right? They're not malicious. They might not understand. Help them understand. They will help you. Uh, more information. The, uh, this is where you can find more, uh, more information about the, the, the project. Uh, and, right, I got two slides mixed up. Contact outreach and, and, and try to prepare materials for everybody involved and more. Because they will, when they will understand, they will help you. Thank you.